I've been asked many times why success seems to come so easily to some, while others struggle their entire lives. Why is it that with all the same opportunities, resources, and time in a day, some people seem to make progress while others stay stuck? These are important questions, and if we can answer them, we can unlock the kind of understanding that changes everything. What I've learned over the years is that success and failure are not accidental. They are governed by principles just like the laws of nature. If you plant the seeds and nurture them, the harvest will come. But if you neglect the soil, forget to water, or let the weeds take over, the results will speak for themselves. Failure is often the result of small errors in judgment repeated over time. And here's the thing. Those errors don't feel like a big deal in the moment. Each small decision seems insignificant. But compounded over weeks, months, or years, they become the reasons why people fail. Now, failure isn't the end. In fact, failure is one of life's greatest teachers if you're willing to learn from it. But for so many people, it becomes a habit. It starts small, like a crack in the foundation, and if left unchecked, it can bring the entire structure down. The good news is, just as failure leaves clues, so does success. And when you know what to look for, you can change course at any time. That's what makes life so extraordinary, our ability to choose and to change. Take a moment to think about your own life. Have you ever felt stuck in a, a cycle of frustration, wondering why your efforts don't seem to yield the results you're after? Or maybe you've seen others achieve what you want and asked yourself, what are they doing differently? These are the kinds of questions that open the door to growth if you're willing to answer them honestly. So what we'll do today is take a closer look at why most people fail, not to point fingers or place blame, but to understand. Because understanding is the first step to transformation. And as we explore this topic, I want you to think about how it applies to your own life. Where have you struggled? Where have you succeeded? Let this be a time of reflection, of insight, and of action. One of the biggest obstacles to success is the lack of self-discipline. It's a simple concept, but I'm telling you, mastering it is anything but easy. Self-discipline is the ability to do what you should do, when you should do it, whether you feel like it or not. And make no mistake, most of the time, you won't feel like it. That's the truth. People often wait for motivation to strike, for the perfect mood or the right circumstances. But success doesn't wait for you to feel like it. Success comes when you act in spite of your feelings. Now think about how this plays out in daily life. How many times have we told ourselves, I'll start tomorrow. Tomorrow becomes next week, next week becomes next month, and before you know it, years have passed and nothing has changed. We convince ourselves that one missed opportunity, one skip workout, or one ignored Responsibility won't matter. But here's the reality. Every decision matters. Each choice is like a brick. And over time, those bricks build the foundation of your life. Why is self-discipline so critical? Because success is not built on grand, dramatic actions. It's built on the little things. It's built on consistency. It's built on waking up early even when you're tired. It's built on saying no to distractions, even when they're tempting. It's built on doing the work, even when no one is watching. 
That's the price of success. And self-discipline is the currency you use to pay it. But here's the catch. Self-discipline isn't something you're born with. It's a skill. And like any skill, it can be developed. It starts with small wins. If you've been putting off a task, tackle it today. If you've been procrastinating, take the first step right now, even if it's small. Success begins in the smallest of actions. The key is to focus on progress, not perfection. You're not trying to change everything overnight. That's overwhelming. Instead, you're building momentum one disciplined decision at a time. One of the best ways to strengthen self-discipline is to tie it to your goals. Ask yourself, why am I doing this? If your reason is strong enough, it will fuel your commitment. Weak reasons produce weak results, but strong reasons create a sense of urgency. They remind you of what's at stake. Whatever it is, Hold on to it. Let it guide your actions when your feelings try to steer you off course. And hold yourself accountable. This is such a vital piece to self-discipline. Accountability. When you hold yourself accountable, or better yet, have someone else hold you accountable, you're far more likely to follow through. It's easy to break promises to yourself, but when you make a commitment to someone else, there's added weight. They help keep you on track when your own resolve falters. A while back, I met a man who told me he was struggling to achieve his goals. He was bright, talented, and full of ambition, but he just couldn't seem to make progress. When we dug a little deeper, we discovered the problem. He was inconsistent. He would work hard for a week, then coast for a month. He'd start a project with enthusiasm, then abandon it when things got tough. His lack of discipline was sabotaging his success. I told him, success is predictable. If you commit to the right habits and stick with them, the results will come. He took that advice to heart. He began practicing discipline in small, manageable ways. Waking up earlier, sticking to a daily routine, following through on his commitments. Over time, those small wins compounded into something extraordinary. Today, he's living the life he once dreamed of. The same can be true for you. Self-discipline is not about being perfect. It's about being persistent. It's about showing up every day, putting in the work, and trusting the process. It's about choosing growth over comfort, even when it's hard. Because the truth is, nothing worth having comes easy. If it did, everyone would have it. So tell me, where in your life could you use more self-discipline? What's one area where you've been putting off action, waiting for the perfect moment? Remember, the perfect moment doesn't exist. The time to start is now. Begin with one step, no matter how small. That's how you build the muscle of discipline, and that's how you set yourself on the path to success. Next. The second reason most people fail is a lack of clear vision. Vision is the compass that guides your life. Without it, you're like a ship without a sail, adrift at the mercy of the wind and the waves. A life without vision is reactive instead of proactive, and it's easy to mistake movement for progress. Just because you're busy doesn't mean you're headed in the right direction. And here's the hard truth. Most people are busy, but they're not productive. They're running on a treadmill, expending energy, but getting nowhere. Now, why is vision so important? Because it gives your life focus and purpose. It's the why behind everything you do. 
A clear vision helps you make better decisions, manage your time more effectively, and overcome obstacles with greater resilience. When you have a vision, you have clarity about what matters, and just as importantly, what doesn't. That clarity allows you to say no to distractions, to stay on course even when life throws challenges your way. But here's the problem. Many people don't take the time to define their vision. They go through life reacting to circumstances instead of creating the circumstances they want. They let other people's expectations dictate their choices. They drift, hoping that somehow, someday, things will work out. But hope is not a strategy, and life doesn't reward the drifter. Life rewards the planner, the dreamer with a map and a destination in mind. So how do you create a vision? Start by asking yourself the big questions. What do you want out of life? What kind of person do you want to become? What legacy do you want to leave behind? These are not easy questions, and the answers won't come overnight. But they're worth wrestling with because they shape the course of your life. Your vision is your North Star, and it should inspire you, challenge you, and pull you forward, even on the days when motivation is nowhere to be found. Once you've identified your vision, the next step is to write it down. There's something powerful about putting pen to paper. Writing your vision makes it real. It's no longer just a vague idea floating around in your mind. It becomes a tangible goal you can work toward. Be specific. A vague vision leads to vague results. If you want to achieve financial freedom, define what that looks like. Is it a certain amount in savings? Is it being debt free? Is it owning your time? The clearer your vision, the easier it is to create a plan and take actionable steps. But having a vision is only the beginning. You must revisit it regularly. Life has a way of pulling us in a thousand different directions. And if you're not careful, you can lose sight of what truly matters. Make it a habit to reflect on your vision. Ask yourself, am I moving closer to my goals or am I drifting? Let your vision guide your daily actions, your weekly priorities, and your long-term decisions. Years ago, I met a young woman who was frustrated with her life. She felt stuck in a dead-end job and unsure of what she wanted to do next. She told me, I feel like I'm just going through the motions, but I don't know where I'm going. I asked her, what's your vision? What do you want to achieve? She hesitated because she had never thought about it that way. She had goals, yes, but no overarching vision tying them together. We worked together to define what success looked like for her, not just in her career, but in her relationships, health, personal growth, and contributions to the world. Once she had a clear vision, everything changed. She started making decisions with purpose. She left her job and pursued a career aligned with her passions. Today, she's thriving, not because she had all the answers, but because she finally had a direction. Here's another thing to consider. Your vision can evolve. As you grow, your goals and priorities may shift, and that's okay. What's important is to keep your vision aligned with your values. A vision that no longer resonates with who you are or where you want to go will lose its power to inspire you. Stay flexible but committed to the process of refinement. Tell me, do you have a clear vision for your life? If not, take time to create one. Start with the areas that matter most. Your career, your relationships, your health, your personal development. 
Imagine what success looks like in each area. Then set goals that align with that vision. And if you already have a vision, revisit it. Does it still inspire you? Is it guiding your daily actions? Use your vision as a filter for your decisions. If an opportunity doesn't align with your vision, it's a distraction. And distractions over time lead to failure. Failure to define a clear vision is one of the most common reasons people fall short of their potential. But the good news is, it's never too late to create or refine your vision. The moment you gain clarity about where you want to go, you reclaim control of your life. You stop drifting and start directing your energy toward what truly matters. Next. The third reason most people fail is their inability to master relationships. No matter how skilled, talented, or hardworking you are, your success will ultimately depend on how well you can connect, communicate, and collaborate with others. Success is never a solo journey. It's a team effort, a symphony of relationships working together in harmony. Yet, so many people overlook this fundamental truth. They focus solely on their personal goals and ambitions, neglecting the one thing that can multiply their results, meaningful connections with others. Think about it. Every opportunity, every breakthrough, every success story involves people. Relationships are the bridges to opportunity. And here's the kicker. Relationships don't just happen. They require effort, intention, and investment. Yet many people take them for granted, assuming they'll always be there or that they don't need to prioritize them. So why do people fail in this area? One reason is a lack of emotional intelligence. Emotional intelligence is your ability to understand and manage your emotions while also understanding and influencing the emotions of others. It's about empathy, listening, and being aware of how your words and actions affect those around you. People with low emotional intelligence often struggle to build trust, resolve conflicts, or inspire loyalty. They may unintentionally sabotage their relationships through insensitivity or self-centered behavior. Another reason people struggle with relationships is the failure to communicate effectively. Communication is not just about talking. It's about connecting. It's about listening more than you speak, about seeking to understand before trying to be understood. Most people think they're good communicators because they know how to express their thoughts. But real communication is about creating mutual understanding. It's about making the other person feel heard, valued, and respected. And then there's trust. Trust is the foundation of every successful relationship. Without it, nothing else matters. But trust isn't something you can demand. It's something you earn over time through consistency and integrity. Every promise you keep, every time you show up when you say you will, Every honest interaction builds trust. On the other hand, broken promises, dishonesty, or a lack of follow-through will erode trust faster than anything else. I once worked with a business owner who was struggling to keep his company afloat. His products were excellent, his marketing was solid, and he worked tirelessly. But he couldn't figure out why his business wasn't growing. When we looked deeper, the issue became clear. He was neglecting his relationships. His employees didn't feel valued. His customers felt like transactions instead of partners. He was so focused on the numbers that he forgot about the people behind them. Once he started investing in those relationships, appreciating his employees, listening to his customers, and building 
genuine connections, everything changed. His business didn't just survive, it thrived. The same principles apply to personal relationships. Those relationships need attention and care. You can't expect them to flourish if you're not willing to put in the effort. Show appreciation. Spend quality time. Be present. These are simple things, but they make all the difference. Neglect them, and you'll find yourself feeling isolated no matter how much success you achieve. But mastering relationships isn't just about what you do for others. It's also about who you surround yourself with. Your associations have a profound impact on your success. You are the average of the five people you spend the most time with. If you're surrounded by people who lack ambition, who discourage your dreams, or who pull you down, it's going to be incredibly difficult to rise above. On the other hand, if you associate with people who inspire you, challenge you, and push you to be better, they'll lift you to new heights. So take a moment to evaluate your current relationships. Are they helping you grow or are they holding you back? Are you investing in the people who matter most or are you letting those relationships slip through the cracks? And just as importantly, what kind of person are you in your relationships? Are you someone who adds value, who lifts others up, who people can count on? Or are you taking more than you're giving? Remember, relationships are not transactions. They're partnerships built on mutual respect and shared goals. If you approach them with a giving mindset, looking for ways to add value rather than just take, you'll find that people respond in kind. They'll want to work with you, support you, and help you succeed. What you give, you get. In the end, your ability to master relationships will determine the level of success you achieve. You can't do it alone, and you don't have to. When you invest in people, when you show up for them, and when you build trust and connection, you create a network of support that's stronger than any individual effort. Ask yourself, how are your relationships today? Are there bridges you need to mend, connections you need to deepen, or associations you need to change? Reflect on this, because if you can master the art of relationships, you'll have the foundation for lasting success. Success and failure are shaped by the same force, the choices we make each day. Every moment presents an opportunity to grow, to adapt, and to take even the smallest step toward a better version of yourself. It's never about perfection, nor is it about avoiding failure altogether. Failure will come, but it's what you do with it that makes the difference. The real question isn't whether you'll face obstacles, it's whether you'll learn from them and let them refine you. Life's outcomes are often rooted in habits, and those habits come from your priorities and your commitment. If you want different results, you must be willing to change the approach. Ask yourself, what can I do today, not someday, to move closer to the life I want? Action doesn't have to be grand. It just has to begin. There's power in starting, in moving forward even when the road feels uncertain. It's also important to remember that success is a journey, not a destination. Each step forward matters, even when progress feels slow. You don't need to have all the answers right now. You just need to have the courage to keep going, to adjust when needed, and to stay open to the lessons along the way. Life rewards effort and persistence. And with time, those small steps compound into something extraordinary. So here's the challenge. Look at where you are and decide where you want to go. Reflect on what's holding you back 
but don't dwell there. Instead, focus on what's within your control, the choices you make, the habits you build, and the actions you take. When you do, you'll find that success isn't so much a destination you arrive at, but a path you walk every day. It's not something you chase. It's something you create. And it starts right now.